Thank you. Um, there's some thank yous that I, I want to uh, just quickly get, give out from the family, um, in particular Brian for his vision and Jonas for his art. Danny Nicolata, if you're, could you please just stand for a second? He's an inspiration to us all. Tori Hartman, if you could just stand for a second. These are some friends that I just can't not recognize. Um, also, the folks here at the Job Corps Center, um, the, the, the people behind us from the San Francisco Arts Commission, represented by P.J. Johnston. P.J., you're here somewhere. Um, and the company that I work for, ResCare, in particular, Ron, Vince, Rick, and Liz, who's our senior leadership team that's here. Um, and in particular, all the youth that is with us today, um, both physically here and in spirit. The youth are really the hope for tomorrow, and Harvey saw that and, and recognized that early on. I've had the opportunity to talk a lot about Harvey in the last couple weeks as I worked with the film folks in terms of a couple premieres, and the question that I kept getting asked most frequently was, your uncle never got to see his larger hopes come to pass. and, and with, with mayors being elected and members of Congress who are openly LGBT. And my response to them was that actually Harvey did see that. Um, he dreamed it and therefore he saw it. That was his dream and he actually did visualize that. And like so many other people who visualize the disenfranchised, the marginalized, and those that have not been fully brought into our society, we have leaders that actually dream that before it's physically seen. And we've been able to now see mayors being elected. You've got one just up the, up the road in Portland, Sam Adams, who was elected recently. And we've got members of Congress that represent our community. Um, so, so he did get to see that dream. His example was courage. His message was hope. Harvey's death 30 years ago, um, I was 17. I was a youth myself. Um, I was in college. It was my first year. Several days after his death, I actually um, was invited to a poetry reading in Washington, D.C., where I went to school. And in that poetry reading, I met um, one of really our great literary champions and, and, and elder stateswoman of our time, Dr. Maya Angelou. And, um, and I had a brief chat with her. And it was interesting. She said to me that, that she pointed out that there were protesters outside, and they weren't protesting the fact that Harvey was murdered. They were protesting the fact that we were memorializing him, and they were with a church. And she said um, that, they're, that they're being moved by fear, and that they don't know, what they don't know is that Harvey could have hidden and, and, and most of us in the LGBT community could hide. He had the courage to choose not to. And the message by choosing not to, and not only not to, but proclaim who he was authentically, was a message that would ring throughout, throughout the nation. And it may not be immediately recognized, but it was a message that he stood on the shoulders of those from other disfranchised communities who also didn't hide. So he had this tremendous amount of courage. She sent me recently a quote on courage. I'm convinced that courage is the most important of all virtues because without it, without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. You can be kind for a while. You can be generous for a while. You can be just for a while. You could be merciful for a while, even loving for a while. But it's only with courage that you can persistently and insistently be kind, generous, and fair. It brought new meaning to her words in, in her, in her uh, book of, of prose, uh, which, which is entitled, um, You Can't Teach a Caged Birch to Sing. You may cut me down with your twisted bitter lies, but still I rise, I rise, I rise. We're here at one of the premier workforce centers in the country, thanks to the folks that are in the audience, in particular Speaker Pelosi and Mayor Brown. Um, I had a gentleman who I've become friends with. His name is Ricky Wright. He was a customer, a client. He was a apprentice machinist, and he was laid off. And there's a tremendous loss with being laid off, and we have a lot of Americans today out there facing this. Uh, and it, it, it is a significant loss. 
and it affects your, your focus, it affects your very being. And he had the opportunity to change his career and he went into nursing. And Ricky, I spent 18 months working with him on a, on a monthly and weekly basis sometimes to get him through that program. Interestingly enough, Ricky would always make a rather subtle but, but clear homophobic comment to me about some of the folks in the nursing program. And so when the program fit, when, when he actually graduated, got his nursing degree, he came in and as was typical of, of trainees, he said, is there anything I could do for you? Can I write a letter? Can I bring you something? I said, Ricky, what you can do for me is to not diminish other people. And he said, what do you mean? I've never diminished other people. I said, but you've come in for 18 months and you have given very small jeers and sneers towards some people in your class who were living a lifestyle that you didn't understand. And he explained to me, which I knew, that he was a lay minister with the um, Mount Bethel Church in, in, in Broward County. He left, he, 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 he apologized, he left. I ran into him five years later. And in 1998, he introduced me to his children. He also told me that he has started a outreach program of open and affir affirmation at Mount Bethel Church, and that he went on to educate everyone that he meets, that we must include everyone, and that he changed. That's courage. It's courage to change. And that is the hope. The youth is the hope that we have to change our perspective, to change we've, the way we view things tomorrow. That was Marvie, Harvey's message. You must tell everyone that you know you must share who you are, because when they know us, they don't fear us. And, and that is what we are often up against, is, is fear. We very much operate on the back of our leader's shoulders. And we, and Harvey absolutely wanted his memory to go on and for us to stand on his shoulders as other civil rights leaders of the time. We have today the shoulders of not only our past, but we have our present leaders. We have shoulders of folks like Bevin and Mayor Brown and Gavin and Jose Cisneros and, um, and, and Speaker Pelosi. The Bay Area, as Jonas had said, is absolutely a catalyst for change, leadership in the country and in the world. Last year at this time, I was in the Netherlands with Vince Duren, our president of our ETSG division, and we were talking with the high ministers in The Hague, and there was a comment about leadership in this country, and then they said, but you have a very bright light, and the bright light that the whole world sees is in the person that I have the tremendous honor to introduce, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you.